because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you and like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when i'm not drawing when you're drawing then like you live within the page and that's it like you like i have this process that that's that i've developed that is definitely quite fast uh and then like i'll i'll, I'll get everything that i need and then i'll sit down and i'll be working on the page and i don't think of anything else and the second i stop it's it's something i actually need to, t to dial back on like i can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that if you have a story that you love that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day other people will love it like go out and make that story there's never been a better time to to make your comic and that's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call, letting you know you're the new Superman. Coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay. And I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work. Rewind it, okay, I can start from the start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging. Uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I wanna, um, like, what would advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, and and we don't get opportunities like that very often. Because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you. And like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when I'm not drawing. When you're drawing, then like you live within the page and that's it. Like you like I have this process that that's that I've developed that is definitely quite fast. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll I'll get everything that I need and then I'll sit down and I'll be working on the page and I don't think of anything else. And the second I stop, it's it's something I actually need to to, to dial back on like i can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that if you have a story that you love that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day other people will love it like go out and make that story there's never been a better time to to make your comic and that's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call, letting you know you're the new Superman. Coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. So I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay. And I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work. Rewind it, okay, I can start from the start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging. Uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I wanna, um, like, what would advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, and and we don't get opportunities like that very often. Because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you. And like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when I'm not drawing. When you're drawing, then like you live within the page and that's it. Like you like I have this process that that's that I've developed that is definitely quite fast. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll I'll get everything that I need and then I'll sit down and I'll be working on the page and I don't think of anything else. And the second I stop, it's it's something I actually need to to, to dial back on like i can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that if you have a story that you love that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day other people will love it like go out and make that story there's never been a better time to to make your comic and that's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call, letting you know you're the new 
Superman coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay, and I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work, rewind it, okay, I could start from this start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging, uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I wanna, um, like, what, what advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, and and we don't get opportunities like that very often. Because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you. And like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when I'm not drawing. When you're drawing, then like you live within the page and that's it. Like you like I have this process that that's that I've developed that is definitely quite fast. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll I'll get everything that I need and then I'll sit down and I'll be working on the page and I don't think of anything else. And the second I stop, it's it's something I actually need. To, to dial back on, like I can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that. If you have a story that you love, that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day, other people will love it. Like go out and make that story. There's never been a better time to, to make your comic. That's just the beginning of what's coming next. In the comic show, phase two. Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call letting you know you're the new Superman. Coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay, and I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work, rewind it, okay, I could start from this start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging, uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I wanna, um, like, what, what advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, and and we don't get opportunities like that very often. Because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you. And like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when I'm not drawing. When you're drawing, then like you live within the page and that's it. Like you like I have this process that that's that I've developed that is definitely quite fast. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll I'll get everything that I need and then I'll sit down and I'll be working on the page and I don't think of anything else. And the second I stop, it's it's something I actually need to to dial back on. Like I can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that. If you have a story that you love, that would be the story that you you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day, other people will love it. Like go out and make that story. There's never been a better time to, to make your comic. That's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two. Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call letting you know you're the new Superman. Coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay, and I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work, rewind it, okay, I could start from this start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging, uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I wanna, um, like, what, what advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, 
and and we don't get opportunities like that very often because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you and like and it's and that's that's what happens when i'm not drawing when you're drawing then like you live within the page and that's it like you like i have this process that that's that i've developed that is definitely quite fast uh and then like i'll i'll, I'll get everything that i need and then i'll sit down and i'll be working on the page and i don't think of anything else and the second i stop it's it's something i actually need to, to dial back on like i can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that if you have a story that you love that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day other people will love it like go out and make that story there's never been a better time to to make your comic that's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. So tell us what it was really like to get the call, letting you know you're the new Superman. Coming to us live from the multiverse is Scarlet Witch herself. Watch out, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning actor, director, and writer. This is Grand Admiral Mithron Yerodo. May warrior's fortune smile on your favors. I have notebooks that I do all my work in, and I just was like, okay. And I just sort of started running it through quickly in my head, I, like a movie. And you can sort of, you fast forward the action at this point, okay, that's not gonna work. Rewind it, okay, I could start from this start, go maybe go this way instead, like just zigging and zagging. Uh, and, and I jot down notes to myself so I remember that mental movie in my head. That I um, wanna, like, what, what advise people is, if you get the chance to, to, to meet somebody who means something to you, tell them that. You know, it will make their day, it will make your day, and and we don't get opportunities like that very often. Because the story in your mind will always come out faster than what actually gets down onto that page in front of you. And like yeah. and it's and that's that's what happens when I'm not drawing. When you're drawing, then like you live within the page and that's it. Like you like I have this process that that's that I've developed that is definitely quite fast. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll I'll get everything that I need and then I'll sit down and I'll be working on the page and I don't think of anything else. And the second I stop, it's it's something I actually need. To, to dial back on like i can't stop my mind kind of going forward in that if you have a story that you love that would be the story that you would walk into a shop and find and be happiest to have discovered that day other people will love it like go out and make that story there's never been a better time to to make your comic that's just the beginning of what's coming next in the comic show phase two Joining us today is no other than Spider-Man himself. It's an unbelievable pleasure for me to introduce. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to episode 51 of the Comics Show. I'm your host, Technique, and I'm sitting here with my co-host, my Hawk Plays. Did I say your name right? Yeah, you're good, Frank. <laughs> this is a joke. You're it's good, a brother. Inside joke. All right, man. <laughs> How you doing, dude? It's been a while. As well, it's been a week, I should say. Yeah, it's, it's I'm going well, man. Everything's going well. It's a nice little Saturday here. Summer's finally coming to an end. Weather's kind of cracking, which is nice. So I'll take it. I'll take it. How you doing? How about yourself? I see you're uh, knee deep or neck deep into Destiny. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I'm I'm just kind of burnt out of MMOs. I just don't want to play them anymore right now. Uh, you know, I play Final Fantasy 14 offline, raid in that, and that's pretty good for me. I just, just disappointment after disappointment. So I was just like, uh, everybody's... Like literally, my timeline is just number Destiny too. When it comes to people just hooting and raving about the game, and I was like, tried in the past, and um, it wasn't what I wanted. And now the the game is like exactly where I expected it to be when it first came out. So nice. Uh, it's really really fun. I'm playing it on the hardest setting in the, the story modes, legendaries and stuff. So it's been really really fun challenge. And yeah, man, it's it's. I'm not like everyone's like, dude, you're going to like forget about your family and something. Like, nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna get <laughs> what? Like, like, MMO players, you know, you've you've been through that already. You've been through the the, the addiction route, I guess, quote unquote. Um, but you know, I'm not like that in it, but I am having a lot of fun. So it's you know, finally have nice to have something that I can enjoy on stream. And they just went uh, straight, like straight for it. Like you're gonna have no life. You're gonna like have no family. You're damn okay. Right. They just oh okay. Like turn around, <laughs> the crack is real. And I'm like, all right, it's real. The addiction's real. Yeah, it's god it's, it's damn. Fun. Fun. I'm yeah, man, I'm, I'm I'm happy that you have. I mean, I what was it. I I loved playing it when it first came out. Uh, I never really got into Destiny One because 
I like my internet was absolute trash and you really had to be online for it. I didn't have any other friends playing it. So I don't have that attachment to the Destiny franchise like a lot of others do. So when I got into Destiny 2, like, you like the game? What the hell's wrong with you? I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, but I, I enjoyed it. Just I fell off with it with, with raids and everything because I had no friends at the time. Yeah. So, but the game, yeah, the games, I mean, it's it's fun. You can play for hours and just and just dive in. So I'm happy you're I'm happy you're having fun with it because this has been a uh interesting year for video games, especially after yeah. New World and then Lost Ark, how it hit really, really high, and then yeah. it got really, really low for a lot the of people. Thing is- New World is is doing really well now. Um, Came back, I, right? Yeah, they they are they're on the comeback right now. And then next month, no, October is a really big patch. Wow! Where they have a brand new like area called Brimstones, and it's sand. And they showed somebody leaked it, but it was a gigantic sandworm just like busting out Ooh. of the ground and stuff. And it was really cool looking. So everyone's hyped about it. They're introducing a new weapon. Which is a great sword, which I wanted since 2015. Um, but um, yeah, the great sword is coming, and then it got it's Roman and Egyptian, so based, so it's really dope. Uh, so that's gonna be really cool. Uh, but other than that, yeah, man, a lot of a lot of these MMOs have been missed. Uh, you know, I, Ileon just announced this closing, and it's hadn't even been a year yet, you know, and it's already like done. Wow, I mean, they went through a lot with that game. You know, they went through a it was rebranded. It used to be called Air, and it was rebranded and redone, and then they hired a new office to redo it, and then it's gone. You know, uh, speaking of gone news, um, Shadow Shadow Run, the Shadow Run, series? one of those games, part of the Shadow Run series. I, I, I forget which one. Stalker, I think it's Stalker Two or Three or whichever one they're on. They, it got put on indefinite hold as well. So a lot of these studios are just kind of like closing games up, man, moving on, and a lot of new studios are opening. You know, um, yeah, a new AAA studio that just opened for this Marvel game that's coming out. Um, there's, so there's, and wow. it's crazy. A lot of new studios are opening with other former high, mm-hmm. like high up there, uh, like creative directors, art directors, uh, from from these major studios going off and branching, branching on their own now and getting, getting uh, funding or whatever it is to start their own studio and start their own game. So. Like when we're when we're watching all these tra- trailers and you see you know from you know Marvel Studio games and then it's like Joe Schmo, st- it's a bad example, but like it's like what? Like where did this guy? Co- it's like I feel like every time for the Sony's for the for the you know you know it's not E three anymore, but you know even the Comic Cons or the the I don't know what you thought about it. We could probably talk about it here in a few minutes, but yesterday's Marvel Disney Pixar game showcase, all studios yeah. that seem brand new and I didn't really know about. So yeah, it's, man. I mean, Disney an interesting games. Time. Yeah, I think Disney games just kind of sprouted out of nowhere. Um, it wasn't yep. a thing. It just kind of like inclusive. You know, it just made they were developing these games for a long time. And honestly, I think that's the best way to do it, man. It's like you know, when you're a titan like Disney, you don't really have to announce everything that you're working on, and like until you have product to show. And uh, and again, I, I hate to do this but this is why i get upset at dc and warner brothers half the time so i'm just like guys you don't have to speak it into the void when it ain't gonna come out anytime soon and then say it's ready and then just get rid of it or you know stuff like that it's better for them to work on the game present something like and just be like hey it's released the next month or two months down the line or whatever and i think that's a lot better because that disney game that's a huge hit right now that's more than animal crossing at the moment uh disney life disney whatever it's called i think it's called disney life it's on steam right now i didn't even know that thing he released didn't even know i didn't see a beta didn't see an alpha didn't see any news really? on it. Just released. yeah it's, it's like animal crossing you, you you make your own character and you, and you go through you like life is a life sim with all disney characters and you solve problems with them and you build houses you build your house it's on steam like valley it. disney valley yeah that's oh it. damn it's got a really high rating too oh, yeah dude that game man my friends are you talking about People talking about Destiny and Crack. That game is sniffable. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, they're, they're, man, my friends, one that's pregnant, very pregnant, she's just nonstop playing that game. Like, she's like, I can't stop. And then she's like, D23 just dropped more. They just, they're already talking about a DLC, a free DLC coming, like, already. Wow. It just came out, man. Like, 
So yeah. yeah, it literally just came out the other day, se yeah. September 6th. So yeah. Disney Dreamlight Valley is a hybrid between life sim and adventure game rich yeah. with quest exploration and engaging activities featuring Disney and Pixar friends, both old and new. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they come, they come for Animal Crossing neck. And I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they already got it on the top and block. Um, because you can already do a billion different things that you can't do. You you build your house, you go inside, you can have other people over, you can customize your avatar, you can unlock all these different uh, Disney characters. There's, di there's different themes. I think the first theme is like uh, those dead vines from um, Manifolent. Oh, okay. Those things are like taking over where you have to like do stuff to get rid of them or whatever. Uh, so it's 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 pretty it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Um, uh, uh, by the way, out there, because it's Saturday. Hi, chat. How you doing? Uh, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Twitch, listening to us on podcast or or VODs and whatnot, you know, feel free to say hi in chat. We got a lot of things uh, to go over today. You can see it on, am I pointing the right way? Yeah, you can see uh, over there next to Frank's face uh, some of the things that we're going to go through today. We're going to start uh, with, some, with some DC news. And then, you know, these past, starting yesterday, it was the D23 Expo, and a lot of news uh, came out from that. We just, you know, talked about a little bit of it, a little bit about it with uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley. To me, I was a little disappointed with the showcase yesterday for video games, but then Star Wars, Lucasfilms, and Marvel just absolutely destroyed it at their big showcase, which is actually still going on right now. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of things to talk about. And feel free to, you know, Throw questions in chat afterwards, Twitter, MySpace, whatever. We like to talk in our own chats as well. So, uh, so yeah, we got a couple of things to talk about today. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite interesting, um, and we'll we'll get into it. But it's quite interesting how Marvel does their showcase, blows it out of the water. People are super happy, and then DC cancels. Yeah, right? and then has all this drama going on. Still, still have Urza drama to this day for some reason. <laughs> But then Disney comes out of the woodworks and just like, Bleh! and it's just like, you know, like you didn't have to do it. <laughs> it's just, just, it's just like, let's go ahead and rub the salt in the wound while we can, you know? And, and I, I respect it. I respect the, the literally the flag domination that's going on. It's like King of the Hill right now when it comes to this stuff, because people can't sleep on Netflix either. Netflix is still dwindling out there. So it's just like, Disney's like, eh, you know what? I say you don't want a monopoly. Yeah, I'm just gonna eat everything anyway. So it's just like I'm I'm here for it, man. They're putting out really great stuff. Um, you know, DC, Warner Brothers, DC to get into our subject coming up. They're talking about revamping and redoing and, and everything. They're looking at different things like HBO Max and um, you know, all these different avenues to be able to do that. I mean, obviously, Discovery Plus is not the place. It's like, you know, unless they're gonna do a uh um uh, a reality TV with superheroes, I, I don't think this I don't think Discovery Plus is gonna be the place. But HBO no. Max is a bold choice and a very good choice at that because, you know, Harley and, and, and uh, Poison Ivy is in their fourth season, apparently. And that's huge, you know, especially for an animated system coming from D.C. where money is kind of in. Um, so they're doing really well. So <clears throat> moving on to the first topic. D.C. reveals Joker's real name. I feel like this has been done multiple times. I, I don't I don't know why I'm I'm not shocked. Like, it's just like. We knew the story, and I forgot what animation it came from, but we knew the story of Joker being a fell comedian. Um, and he wasn't a bad guy. He was just he just wanted to be funny, and people were very mean to him, bullied him, threw stuff at him. Uh, he got beat up on the streets and stuff. So it's a lot from that animation slash comic book. I think it was a comic book and an animation that had both of that stuff was put into the Joker show or movie, excuse me. Um, and, you know, they, they of course, they exaggerated it a good bit and made him with his mom versus he had a wife or somebody or a girlfriend he loved very much. Um, and just things happen. And I believe in the animation, it's been such a long time ago since I've seen it, uh, people that he pissed off or hated him came in and took everything away from him, basically, um, and which turned him into the person he is today. Um, so it's it's very interesting how they're just like, we're finally gonna reveal. Then they, and I'm just like, didn't we do this 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 song and dance already? Maybe I'm wrong. They they keep on they you keep know? on going back to the well one one too many times. But I guess that's where it comes yeah. from being the the current the current version of it with Flashpoint and and how many different universes there are and and what Barry you know Allen is going to do again. That's gonna mess things up in the. In the overall DC world, at least in the comic book space, right? 
Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I mean even if you can have it in the uh, you know, in the movies, right? With uh what was Joaquin Phoenix's name? Arthur Arthur Fleck, I think was his name, I wanna say. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was that uh that was Joaquin Phoenix's in in Joker, right? So did they take that from the comic books? I don't think so, but it's the, the, the medium part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, but, but not the story itself, but just the failed comedian part was like obviously juiced from oh yeah the original Joker's life. Um but it's you know, I'm just I'm sick of Joker. I, I hate to say it, I'm just sick of him. Like it, it's it's too much, man. There's so many other DC has so many characters. I you know, I don't even think people, and even true DC people, maybe a few, know how many actual characters and villains that DC has because we all, and we talked about this before, we just focus on Batman and the Bat World. And you know, and that's it. it it's just like when static shot gonna get some attention you know we got a comic yay but when is he gonna get attention when is like you know more black lightning gonna come out and or 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 maybe even hell even canary if you really have to go that way like give give the protagonist the, the female protagonist a little bit more space other than wonder woman like there's so many more like hot girl and all these these people that they show up in these shows and people have no connection no relations no thoughts on these people because they don't expand on it all people care about is Batman and Robin and, you know, Superman and all this stuff. I'm not, you know, I was hyped for Black Adam. Now I'm not. So it's just like all this stuff really be so hmm. much better. Yeah, I'm just not really that hyped. I'm going to go see it because it's Dwayne Johnson, you know. But other than that, if it wasn't him, I'd be passing over that because, you know, I'm going in with very low expectations, believe me. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to say beyond Morbius low. Um, oh, God. Because, yeah, just because I won't. I won't crack. But the funny thing is, is like Morbius may be one of the worst movies ever made, but it gets attention like it's the best. It's oh, literally God, it does. everywhere. It does. I know. They went back in the movie theater and they're on Netflix now. Like, it's just like, <laughs> you know, sometimes that bad stuff happens, but DC can't even pull from that. <laughs> so I really hope that they take the directors from like Harley and Poison Ivy and just shift them into live action because that's brilliant stuff. Like, DC can do the the bad jokes, you know? I mean, hell, they yeah. have a thing called bad joke. They can they can yeah. literally do that. They can do the bad jokes. They can do the cringe. But as long as it's that hardcore, because Harley and Ivy, man, off the start, it's just, I was in love. Like, the first five minutes, I was like, wow, I miss this. I really miss this, you know? Like, old Batman. Just imagine if they redid the old school Batman series with that humor and that dark. Well, nope. did <laughs> I know this is kind of a, you know, we're, we're already off topic here because that's what that's what we do. But you yeah. know, this whole Warner Brothers Discovery debacle is is massive. Uh, obviously, you had the cancellation of Batgirl, and you just brought up something. Uh, we were supposed to get a series yeah. by Bruce Tim called Cape Crusade. I think it was called be, yeah. supposed to be called Cape Crusader. It was supposed to be like a. Um, uh, it was supposed to be a a a return to Batman the Animated Series. Just you know. Um, just now, I guess, right? I can't yeah. think of the word that I want to use for it, but it got canceled. Yep. They, they're canceling everything right now. They are in yeah. Warner Brothers is in dire straits. So much so, I mean, you saw the news, I'm sure many others, and if you haven't, uh, they just push back all their movies again because they only have money in hand to release two more movies this year. So Shazam got pushed. Um, uh, Aquaman got pushed again. Like everything got pushed. We knew Flash. Aquaman's gonna get pushed. It literally just changed one of the staple characters to apparently Amelia Clark, which I'm, you know, I can see her in anything. But it, it's just like now is your chance, guys. Everyone knows that they're dealing with problems, and this kind of goes off of this top, this Joker topic because it's like beating a dead horse as much as you can. It's well, not I want to say a dead horse. I hate that saying. Beating a pinata. And it's like nothing left. And they're just hoping that something pours out. Because that's literally what it feels like. It's like we have done unteen amount of Batmans. We make money off of it. That's the only thing that works that we can do. Anything else yeah. we do outside of that fails. And it's like, well, no. The love of comics is not there. And there's a clear difference. I don't care what people say. It's a clear difference between Marvel, MCU, and DCEU. Is that there's a clear love behind comics versus we have to do something to catch up and make money. So anyway. Um, you know, hope, hope for the hope for the best, whatever. Joker, yay, I guess, whatever. I I just 
I just think now, since they're having problems, is the time to wipe the slate clean and just start over from scratch. Start where you have a good up upbringing, whether if it's fifty percent and up when it comes to ratings. Go with Batman, you know, if you want to, but it, whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're gonna move on, I believe. Um, okay, Pennyworth. I thought that show. Speaking of shows that got canceled, I thought it got canceled. Honestly, um, because Pennyworth has been around for a long time and they're only in their third season and it's been more than three years. I feel <laughs> it does seem like it's been a pretty long time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's been five years <laughs> for Pennyworth, but I understand pandemic and all that stuff. You know, it's like we all been blipped at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Pennyworth. Okay. All right, man. There's a cameo with Pennyworth. There's a cameo that you probably probably not going to expect uh, you want to talk about it matt yeah i mean pennyworth is is alfred obviously before he becomes the alfred that we majority of us know right it's kind of like his origin his upbringing where he got all his quote unquote smarts from and mm. and fighting and <clears throat> during the trailer which is very uh um hippie-esque I don't know, psychedelic, like I don't know what to call it in some instances. Um, yeah, they're just going straight ham with it. I have no idea how they're going to do it or what they're going to do with it. But uh, there is literally a DC character that we've seen in movies and, and in film. And it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's V for Fandetta. It's, it's guy, the guy Fosk mask is in there. It's a guy with the, the black uh, hair that's a, a wig and there's creepy people turning with the guy Fox mask on. Like I, how it's not V for Vandana, this one shot, like I'm scrubbing the trailer right now to find it. There is one shot where it literally looks like it's sh just straight up ripped from the movie with Natalie Portman. And, um, probably is you go weaving. I mean, yeah, it probably is. You don't, like, this is not the, it, it's the hat. Like it's everything. This is wild. How does this make sense? Because when, does that live in the DC universe? I, I, I didn't like think our, so. Like, no, I don't think so, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's I a different time so. frame, too. Like, yeah, it's supposed like to be a, dis a different... I don't remember the movie as much as I was never... And I never really dove into the comic what book. What was, was it? Was it Gotham? <laughs> was it a... Uh, like a countryside of Gotham? I mean, I, I just... I, and, you know, it's just... I feel like people are pulling pennies at this time. You know? Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, oh, so it, it, it was in London, and this, this uh, I believe, the show takes place in, in London, too, because that's where Pennyworth's from, Britain and everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, true, 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 true. But, that makes, okay, okay, eh, whatever. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know how this is going to work. It's going to be interesting, to say the least, but I'm going to, I may go back and watch. I no, may go back and watch some. It's fresh, okay. Yeah. You know, at this point with DC, I, I'm on this point where I'm just rooting for them to have some win. Even though I think their win is Harley and Poison Ivy, like yeah. I think that's their win. I just and they need to stick to animation until they figure out their movie stuff. Eh, well, whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, being like successful said, right now, it got greenlit yeah. for another season. Uh, obviously, the Flash TV show is finally coming to an end. Star Girl is pretty good, but I mean, it's. It's CW. You got some cool characters in there, actually. You got some really cool references to cool characters. Um, Titans was okay on HBO Max. I'm a big fan of the Teen Titans, and I thought it was okay. They definitely could have did things better, but you want to talk about a dark and gritty show? It's dark and gritty. Uh, Doom Patrol actually was really fun ride. And the one show that I wanted to see another season of, Swamp Thing, got canceled. That was a fun show. I love Swamp Thing, and they just they went yeah. they went overboard with it, and I liked it. Mm. So yeah, I don't. It's, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, you know, back and forth. But you know, I, like I said, I'm not. I'm not canceling is <clears throat> canceling is rough because you know it's not like they were like, hey, we have these show plans, we're going to cancel. It's like, hey, we worked on this, you know, and they have all these people that worked their ass off on this stuff, and we're just going to cancel it. You know, it's just like. Do you pay? Do those people get paid? Like, you know, I, I, I just wonder what the hell is going on. Like, people, 
again, people got really mad at me when I tweeted out that I wish Disney would just buy DC. But I mean, at this point, come on, you know, like they can buy them and have them independent. You know, when you just, what? Yeah, I mean, essentially, they're all in Marvel is independent to Disney. Yeah. I mean, yes, it, it's bought and they have a lot of money on hand because of it, but they're run by the same. I mean, literally, Kevin Feige got so fed up with Ike Perlman, where he's like, if you want Marvel to succeed the universe. I need to work on my own. And they said, OK. And that's where everything kind of escalated to the point where they are today with Disney buying them. Um, okay. You know, same thing with Star Wars. It finally took them a little while to figure out what they needed to do. Now, that's not as it, it runs as itself, even though it's owned by Disney Lucas. Yeah. I mean, they literally don't have money on it. I, I can't think of the last time I heard of studios not having money on hand to release like massive triple A studios, publishers, developers. Like that's what you you hear that stuff. If it was in video games, you know, the backlash there would be from it. Like you'd be hearing about like like yeah. cancel canceling and everything like that when it comes to video yeah. games. It's I don't like know what I, God of War right now. Like it's just yeah. like yeah, you know, my thing is is this there, everyone, there's so many people out there that wants to be actors and directors, right? Why don't DC hire the fan made people like the people that make fan fan stuff? They should just hire them and put them in the studio and let them go ham and then direct what they want in and what they don't want in and like just and, and hire people like me or someone else that they don't have to pay gazillions of dollars to be in the film. At this point, I'm pretty sure people will watch anything with DC as long as it is decent. Wait a second. You know, you just... know what? This goes back to a perfect example. Did you ever see and chat? Please let me know if you've seen this, Paul. I want to hear if you heard this, seen this as well. Do you ever see the video of Kevin Smith talking to the university about his experience on trying to write for Batman, the movie? Did you uh, ever hear this story? Batman. So I forgot what the director or producer's name was. Oh my God. But essentially he was a fan. He got into comic books. They saw clerks. They brought him in for some reason. And, and like, this is DC and Warner brothers as a total. I know it's a new era now, but everything you're hearing about is essentially the same thing. Now, long story short, they brought him in after watching clerks because they heard he was a Batman fan to start penning an outline for a Batman movie. He went to this eccentric producer or director's house and he was going through what he wanted to see from the movie, talking about spiders, a big cave. Everyone likes giants and aliens. We can't make Superman fly. Oh, no. Was it, a super, it was a Superman movie. Excuse me, not a Batman movie. Sorry, excuse me. It was a Superman movie, not a Batman movie. We talked about giant spiders. Superman can't fly. What is... His name is Cal. I thought it was Superman. Cal L is his home name. Wait, what is Krypton? Like, they had no idea what anything was about this producer director. I, oh. You can Google this right now. Chat, please let me know if you knew about it. Like it is, it's the, I could not crack up more. Like I was in tears wow. because the end line was, I was, I was, okay. he goes like two years later, I was, I went to a premiere of a movie with Will Smith in it. And he goes, I couldn't believe it. Where in the third act, I saw a giant spider come out from the desert. It was wild, wild west with Will Smith. Huh. That's like they the director or producer of that. I'm doing a horrible job referencing this, but it was like that's how bad it was. Like they wanted the premise of like Wild Wild West with giant spiders and going into a Superman movie. It was like what? Wow, bro. That, and that's what I'm feeling like it is today. Frank, I'm telling you, man, you got to watch this. I'm not doing it justice at all. It is the funniest like 20 minutes, and because it's so bat shit crazy. <laughs> You will not believe it. Have yeah, there you Cage, go. Bro. There you go. You know what it is. Oh my God. It was, it it was with the game. Yes, out. exactly. Thank you. People Jeez. in chat know it. It's the funniest thing ever because it's so insane. Lord D. Yeah, thank goodness that didn't come out. <laughs> anyway, we can oh spend my all the time on you know, talking about their interesting <laughs> ways. But like I, I said, I think we watch it after this. I think you should just like. Grab a bunch of people that just want to be in movies and that's going to work hard for like half the pay and, and go for it. I mean, shit, call me up. <laughs> At this point, anybody can do anyway. <laughs> but they, they were reporting they had their Kevin Feige. Feige. Is it Feige or Feige chat? One or two? One or two? Yeah. Feige, Feige or Feige? It's Feige. It's Feige. 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 Feige? Yeah. So yeah, number that's three. What, I mean, that's what everybody else calls him. And he answers to it. Okay. So, so Feige. like they had, they had their guy, right? They had their guy, David Lynn, I believe. He used to, he was like even going to work on the stuff with George Miller's Superman. 
He heard what they wanted to do. He goes, I'm in. And then David Zazaloff, whatever the hell that guy's name is, that's supposed to be the CEO right now, changed things and essentially like put shackles on him. He's like, nah, I ain't, no, no, I'm out. So they reported it. They pulled that back. And now to, to kind of end this whole thing, Legendary Pictures wants out. They're already talking to Sony Entertainment and someone else. And, um, oh my God, who is it? Someone else. Uh, I think it's someone else, but Legendary Pictures, that's Dune. Iron Gate. That's, the God, that's Monsters. That's the Monsterverse with Godzilla and Kong. If they're out, like, I mean, it's so bad that Henry Cavill, the geek among the geeks, The Witcher, World of Warcraft, Superman, hey, Mission Impossible. He's now pretty much... We believe it's he's Marvel. Hyperion or something like that in the Marvel universe. They just haven't announced anything yet. Like he's going to to to, to Marvel because his love for Superman, they're effing him over. Like, I mean, every, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, room, yeah. I mean, yeah, he has a bigger room. Yeah, hell, they they even state that he might be multiple characters in the Marvel universe. Like, yeah, so I've heard Hyperion have Hyperion and the Beast uh, is what the big the big rumor is. Is like he's supposed to be an X Men as well. So oh, yeah, you know I could see him as Beast one hundred percent, one hundred percent. When they when I saw that, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is glorious. You know, Henry Cavill's Beast. You don't have to put that man in a bodysuit. Dude is just a Beast yeah, already. Right. Like do his hair and put some makeup on him, make him blue. Fuck, it's good. Paint me blue. I'm in. I mean, that's if that's the first cast. I'm like, can't wait for X Men cast. You know, it's going to be Doctor bothered. Doom. That would be wild if he was Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom could work too. I mean, I, I, Doctor Doom is. I mean, yeah, Ooh, that'd be interesting. My thing is, if Tom Hardy can play Bane, <laughs> he can play. We're we're it? also we're also forgetting. Like we look at Henry Cavill and Superman because he is he's brolic. Like he is wide. Henry yeah. Cavill. Like when he he gets beat. Like he got beefed up. You looked at him when he was in. What was it? The Tudors, and what was the movie when it was all about like the Greek gods and everything like that? He was skinny, mm. and like you forget how good of an actor he is. Yes, like you forget how good of an actor he actually is. Yeah, because of the action movies that he's been in recently. So him being in a Marvel movie like that, it's whew. it's like I mean, I it's, it's just it. like it's just like Dwayne Johnson. Like you don't have to put a bodysuit on the dude. Like you just put him, you can form fit a suit on him, make it, make it what he wants. You know, I don't know what it is, man. I think it's, I think it's ego pride, but when I'm bringing somebody as big as like Henry Cavill on screen, you know, Dwayne Johnson, people that's got like a lot of history in film and like just a nerd in general and know yeah. their shit, I'm pulling them on the side and be like, Hey, I know, I know we got this, but what do you think about this? That's what they did with Chadwick Boseman for Black Panther. I mean, you know, yeah. Ryan Cook and him discuss things together. I mean, they develop a language together. Like, it's just like, that was this is how you story. treat your cast as if they're partners, not as if they're you know, something else. And there's horror stories with Tom Cruise and he does things, but still, you know, that's one person Tom you Cruise. probably don't want to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. All right. Moving on, let's get off of that for now. We're gonna go into we're gonna take a break from all the heat and go into anime. So Chainsaw Man announces a release date. Finally, 2002. We, I mean, we heard. I mean, 2002. Good lord, 2022. <laughs> uh, we've heard. We probably heard about Chainsaw Man here and there, um, and never thought to this day that we'd ever get get to see it because it's a pretty wild anime. Um, pretty pretty wild anime. Um, so, so Chainsaw Man, this is yeah. where, you know, anime, I get a little bit lost, right? I, I haven't had a chance to see uh, Dragon Ball's uh, super superhero, but I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, I've heard really good things about it. But tell me tell me something about Chainsaw Man. Yeah, so uh, Fall of 22 anime season is very, very hype because there's a lot of big anime coming out like Tower, Tower of God 2 and like... Um, <clears throat> uh, Mob Psycho 3, like all these big animes that people have been waiting on for years. And then Chainsaw Man got announced. Everybody just kind of like, what? You know, like Chainsaw Man? So um, people are hyped for this. This is like one of the most anticipated, if not the um, one of the most. I'm going to say one of the most. I don't like saying the most, but one of the most anticipated animes of the year because it is raw. Like it's, it's going back to that raw, like gory, you know, kind of almost adult anime. Um, so it follows the story of a protagonist named Dingy. Um, it's about demons. Uh, of course, you know, we always love that because you could just chop up demons all day and it, nobody blinks, blinks an eye on it. So 
There's a lot of gore and a lot of blood that's going to be happening in it. Uh, devils are born from yeah. the fears of humans. Um, and the more fear that a devil incites, the more powerful it becomes. So it kind of feeds off of that energy. Uh, when Digi dies, he makes a contract with a devil in order to be reborn as a human with devil's heart. Um, so it's supposed to be happening. The announcement was supposed to happen during you know the anime expo, whatever. Um, but ultimately, they pushed it back. But there is a release date. Do we have that date? Wait, wait, I lost my notes. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, October 11th, uh, which is a lot sooner than, you know, I th- when, they, when they announced a pushback, I thought it was going to be like next year, honestly. But yeah, nice. Okay, so everybody's really hyped about it. The studio is really good at doing a lot of stuff. Now, only thing that I am very, very, very concerned about, was concerned about, was the censoring of it. Uh, anytime somebody gets decapitated to cut in half or whatever like that, no matter what kind of monster it is, um, it shows on Crunchyroll for like a month and then they censor it. Um, but they're saying that MAPPA has assured everyone anime will not be censored and Chainsaw Man is gory enough to warrant a late night slot. So that's great because let me that's tell how you. they're getting around it. Okay, cool. Well, Berserk. Oof. Even Berserk 2, when the Berserk 2 came out, and that jump was on Crunchyroll. I feel like that's when the censors hit the hit the roof. Like it was bad. Even no, I was no, like, no, oh no. my god, I should not be watching this. Like it was really bad. Um, but like in Goblin Slayer, I mean, like episode one, it was just like goblins just having sex with corpses, you know, it's just wild. But anyway, what? um, yeah, dude, it's, it gets wild. Anime I mean, is so yeah, they know they censor. They what they do is they put a black shadow, a heavy black shadow, you know, on the screen. Like it just looks like it's really dark at a certain point. But this one's not gonna be censored. I'm I'm down for that. I, I think now that how big you know Crunchyroll has gotten and Sony acquiring it, um, that was a big win for Sony. And oh, yeah. you know, they swallowed Funimation. So it's like all this anime on the Sony, like I, I feel like Having stuff like Chainsaw Man and stuff like that, that's money, man. That's money, baby. That's a that's another subscription under Sony's banner. So I'm just like, stop fooling with like Spider-Man and, and that whole thing, just that whole idea, and just own what you got. Video games, systems, anime, you know, and, and those all those other movies they do. Like it, it's it's just wild to me that they pour so much money and effort into like things that they don't even need to concentrate on. <laughs> and they have such great. It's like they have the opposite problem of DC. Sony wants to fail. <laughs> like, I feel like Sony wants to burn their house down. It's just like, hey, Sony, we're going to give you all of this glory. Just don't F it up. And they're just like, but what if we do? You know, like, it's just, I don't get it, man. Uh, but anyway, Chainsaw Man is going to be awesome. Um, if you want to get into anime, if you want, if you, if you thought anime was just like kids and, and all that stuff, you want to watch Chainsaw Man. Um, probably could give you a list of other ones to watch, but Chainsaw Man is gonna be dope and is very, very anticipated. Yeah, have yeah. you have you have and I guess this goes to chat too. Have you watched um a lot of Crunchyroll on the PlayStation or no? Mm-hmm. Uh so Crunchyroll was always an app. Okay. You know, ever since you know PlayStation started getting into doing like more entertain it, but it wasn't owned, you know. So I, I don't know how they're going to they, I think that PlayStation is probably gonna put Crunchyroll subscriptions into like ps ultimate or whatever the heck they're gonna be calling their new okay. service which will make sense and it'll just go up so instead of you paying 9.99 a month you probably pay 20 dollars a month or, or 30 dollars a month and you get like playstation plus and the crunchy roll and food because you know? yeah because crunchy roll has different tiers already it goes all the way up to i think 20 dollars if you really wanted to it's like it goes from like 10 dollars 15 to 20 and it wow. depends on how many devices you can share all your stuff on uh Oh, so I said five and goes to 20. Yep. So, yeah. So you have like, I think I pay $10 and I get four devices or 15. I oh, know. okay. Yeah. So people can use it at the, all the same time. And I think the last one gives you six devices. And it's just like, eh, I don't really need six devices all at once, you know? But it's, yeah, simultaneous, you know. Oh, oh and you can download the anime. For offline, oh, that's good. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be traveling or something like that, just download yeah, yeah, yeah. it all beforehand and you're good to go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then and then Crunchyroll is everywhere. So like I said, it's like their big money makers are right in their face, but they just kind of Sony still wants to be that titan that they thought they were long ago. So hopefully. Yeah, you know. I just I like I. 
I'm very, uh, how do I want to put it? I'm very like OCD when it comes to things, when I'm watching my TV shows, when I'm watching my, my movies and I kind of like to separate everything. I'm kind of like the, uh, you know, old, uh, AV guy where it's like your best in your own like area as mm-hmm. far as like a DVD player is separate than a Blu-ray player is separate than X- Xbox and PlayStation. I'm not going to play movies on like, yeah. that's how it was. So I was just curious of like how the, how, how crunchy roll felt like app wise going through PlayStation, but I forgot it was on there for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't and, run a lot of stuff to PlayStation or Xbox. Yeah. Right. And with the PlayStation five's technology, even PlayStation Four's technology inside the system for like wireless, uh, no uh streaming is really is, is pretty decent playstation 5 is being really really well um but i always say hardcore your stuff anyway because what you'll notice <clears throat> even with smart tvs the quality will change while you're watching like you'll see the resolution oh yeah you know whatever but um smart tvs to me is still the way to go i i you know i, I just if you have a smart tv you don't need to watch on your playstation but the fact that they have it there playstation Again, I think PlayStation needs to invest in apps, on mobile devices, and and put all put all of them under one umbrella. You know, you can do cloud gaming and watch Crunchyroll. And, you know, it's just like all these things that they could be doing. Anyway, all right, let's move on. <clears throat> Black Adam trailer release. Did not watch it um, because I don't want to see it. I'm sick and tired of all these damn. Like, okay, like Dwayne Johnson, I love you, man. You you're you're an idol and all this stuff. You're great, but God dang, man. We're going to be watching this whole damn movie before it comes out, bro. Like he, and, and, and you know, he's so proud of it too. And I, and I, and I feel that I'm great. I'm grateful for like a part, like a person that's really into their character that he's always wanted to play that people always told him he looked like. That's great. But my God, the trailers, bro. Like <laughs> there's going to be another re- trailer release before this movie comes out. <laughs> like it's supposed to come out in October, right? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Yeah. We are, we are 30, 40, 41 days away because it's the 21st math yeah. 41 42 depending on how many days are in september so yeah we yeah 41 days away if math serves me correct and we're getting another trailer and we're <sighs> probably gonna get another another one too right before it for like the movie release trailer like they Final do just trailer. like they do games yeah it's yeah i'm i watched it i watch all the trailers i don't care i like watching trailers it hypes me up i like watching the reaction of the people with the reaction videos it's like a inception of reactions with me um you do get more of it uh i like you said i'm gonna go watch it i'm gonna enjoy it um i'm not going in with major expectations um (laughs) I will say the one thing that does get me excited just because a, I love the actor and the character is very unique and crazy character. I want to know how they're actually going to portray him as Dr. Fade and Pierce Bronson. Like I'm uh, the, he, the the, The the CGI looks great. The outfit looks really cool. It's comic book, but not comic book. And you know, I mean, he looks, he looks great. Obviously as black Adam too. I mean, he fits it. I mean, is it gonna the only the thing that gives me hope is though it's DC, it's not produced by Warner Brothers. It's seven bucks and it's his place Universal his place. or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's not, DC. it's not, yeah, it's not it's not Warner Brothers under the DC umbrella. Pretty it's much just the same studios, I mean, including his own. But yeah, I, I think it is universal. I mean, they they almost all his movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's with the same people and that's not a bad thing because these people know how how Dwayne Johnson operates and knows what he wants yeah. knows, you know and he's behind the camera too when he's not on screen you know it, it's good I just don't want him to play on the people's eye thing again like I, I just want him to grow past that I feel like it's in every damn movie he's got to turn around and like lift his eyebrow up or so you know I, I really hope he gets into Black Adam character I was pretty hyped for what they showed at DC whatever the what was it fandom Fandom, yeah, fandom, excuse me. Fandom. Uh, last year, the year before last, can't tell time anymore. Um, I was kind of <laughs> excited about that. I was like, damn, that looks really good because, you know, when The Rock is choking you, man, how do you sit there and not enjoy it, you know, as a person? Um, but it, it, but it, was, it was really good. It was really good. I, I thought it was really dope seeing him just like, it's a powerhouse of a dude just kind of like go all out. Pretty dope. Yeah, they weren't out. showing anything. They were showing like concepts, and he was talking yeah. over about about his passion. He's like, "I'm gonna, right. you know, I'm gonna take over the D. What was he? What did he say? I'm gonna take over the DC. No, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna turn the DC upside down. Yeah. The, the hierarchy yeah. in DC is about to change. It was like, oh, right, okay. right. Like today okay. is gonna be the, you know, that day will be the day. But great. Then let me 
let me hunger for it, man. Like, yeah. I understand that trailers are there for marketing reasons to get people piped about stuff, but it's like you only need a teaser trailer and one trailer. And that's it. Like, you don't need a teaser trailer, a, a, a teaser of the, of the real trailer, then the real trailer, and then a real trailer teaser of the actual movie trailer, finalized trailer. Like, good Lord, man. Like, you just don't need it. You know? I mean, as we transition into, into D23 and what we're seeing today, is Marvel doing that now? Like, I'm trying to think, because I remember us talking last year, Not like, really. like we're like, where's our Spider-Man trailer? Like, we're like two months away and we still haven't gotten yeah. it yet. I feel it's like we got the teaser trailer and then we got the main trailer and then when released, we got the trailer. And I think they did the same with Thor Love and Thunder. I think they're yeah, yeah, transitioning yeah. The to that. Trailer, right. Because the release trailers like, to get you in the theater. It's like, this is the biggest movie of the year. This is why. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that makes sense, you know. But prior to, to, to November 11th, let's say, for Wakanda Forever, like... We'll probably get one more trailer for sure. I'm, 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 I'm okay with just that one trailer. Because that one trailer is, like, the greatest trailer of all yeah. time. I yeah, don't care. They're doing a lot of reshoots. I mean, literally, if they do another trailer, I, honestly, I want that trailer to be 11 seconds, and they just show the claw. That's it. And I'm good. <laughs> and the Wakanda Forever name. I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah. Good. yeah, like, it's good. <clears throat> I, I think... I think yeah, Marvel Marvel trailers. That Marvel used to be just as bad. I'm not saying you know. I know oh, it always yeah. seems like a fanboying for Marvel, but honestly, Marvel was just as bad. I mean, Iron Man had like a gazillion trailers. At one point, I didn't even know if we were watching a movie or the trailer anymore. Um, but you know, it, they gotten better because they found their niche. They found their, their 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 flavor and how to get people in the the building. And I mean, shit, we might even see it to where Marvel just releases stuff and you don't even know that it was a trailer to begin with. You know, they have so much coming down the window. Um, but yeah, Black Adam. Yeah, it's next month. I mean, shoot, we're all, I'm going to watch it. I mean, who who isn't going to watch it? You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see a DC film that's not Warner Brothers. Um, I mean, right. if, you're, if you're a fan of anything right now, I mean, this is the best time to be alive right now. Between <laughs> between Game of Thrones, between, between Ring of Honor, I watched Thor Love and Thunder. For those of you that don't know, that's actually out. Speaking of Disney Plus yeah, and Disney, Thor Love and Thunder is a, is available to... to uh, stream digitally on Disney Plus, and if you don't have a subscription or if you want to try it out, another Gmail account maybe. Uh, it's it's a dollar ninety nine for the first month, so you yeah. can watch everything essentially for <laughs> binge for the next like thirty days or whatever for two dollars. Everything on Disney Plus. Um, but yeah, I watched. I thought I watched Thor: Love and Thunder the other day. It was I I really enjoyed it, but that leads into. A lot of different things that happened yeah. yesterday and today. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're getting into D23. Uh, let's for, to open up D23. I just want to talk about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving Disney right now because Disney is on that I don't give a f mode right now. Right? They literally are. She-Hulk release. Bro, She-Hulk was twerking. I, I didn't see the episode yet, but I saw that. And I'm like, I'm here for it. But because it's appropriate for what is going on in She-Hulk so much, like, I'm I'm digging this Disney more, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate and flack for this. I don't care, you know. I'm just saying, I love the fun route that they're yeah. taking because oh, yeah. it's just like the, She Hulk isn't the Hulk, <laughs> you know. It's just like we're 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 living in a moment, and Disney's having fun on all broad shoulders of what they can do, and it's just great. And I just love how Disney is is literally smushing it in the haters' faces, man. They put out a, they put out a new poster for She Hulk, and it was her and Megan Stallion <laughs> mid twerk. I lost it. I was like, "Let's fucking go, Disney! Don't care, I baby." It. I love D23, it. Yep. We do twerk in She Hulk, and that's how we do it. Like it, it was literally a post credit scene, whatever. And people are acting like it's like <laughs> the opening scene to like the new Avengers movie. I, I just it just baffles me how people can't have fun anymore. Like I, you know. They'd rather sit there and complain about a female protagonist or, uh, you know, um, uh, T'Challa not being a lot. Like, they'd rather complain about this stuff, you know, than to just sit there and enjoy. How many How many episodes into She-Hulk are you now? Two? I think I'm behind. I uh, know. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm, I think I'm two in. Yeah, I think I'm two in. Yeah, yeah so they I, just I'm, finished I'm episode four, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm just you think, if, if you think like the the beginning of She-Hulk, I think it was episode one where I, I heard the watched... latest one was like, oh no, like I think one. each episode has progressively gotten better, and this last episode I, I thought was amazing. 
Like yeah, every yeah. Disney show that comes, every oh, Marvel yeah. show that comes out, every episode it goes in, I get, I like it even more and more and think it's even better than the last series, right? right. Um, but when they, everything that you just talked about, they showed it in the first episode where they showed all like the tweets and the comments, like She-Hulk, yeah. what is a woman taking on a man's name? Why can't she yeah. be something else? We already have a Hulk. Like they lean into it and I love it. I love how yeah. she claps back and Marvel claps back at all yeah, that. Yeah, and they do they do some good stuff in the next two episodes. Yeah. Back. Yeah. It's great. I I, I love Marvel, it. And she's a perfect person. I think she's a perfect person for it. 100 percent Uh because she claps back in interviews. She's like, I'm a huge mega style fan. They told me I get to do this. I'm 100 percent doing it. And they they everyone thought that shit was just CGI. Nah, mm-hmm. man, that was mocap, baby. <laughs> She was on her back. She was there doing it, yep. Bro, I, I saw the, the mocap outfit, and she was just like, pop. I was like, yo, all right. Say Tatiana, what was her name, Tatiana? Uh, Tatiana Mas- Masali. I, we kept on messing up this name up, yeah. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm here for you, baby girl. Do your thing. I love it. I freaking love it. Anyway, all right, let's go into it. All right, starting off, uh, Bad Batch. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> season two. Hell yeah. Thumbs up for that. Bad Batch is dope as hell. I mean, January 4th, 2023. Perfect time. Coming off of the start of the year, we get Bad Batch in there. A lot of people didn't even think Bad Batch was coming back. because like news was kind of shady on it. But I mean, seeing it coming through, I'm down for it. I'm going to give it a thumbs up for that. That's great. What, what a way to uh, bring in a lot more people that miss Clone Wars and stuff. Like, honestly. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a great bridge and it's a great it's a great story for for us nerds or like you want to bring kids in and have some fun watching some star wars too. watch one and two season one and now season two coming yeah. out in january and it's, watch uh, and it's, on the clone it's definitely wars. nice yeah 100 do clone wars because as our next thing uh tales of jedi animated followed by ashoka and count dooku uh for three episodes each all episodes are released october 26th this october yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Star Wars Visions. I forgot when Visions came out, but I want to say it's unless it came out this year and my timing's all, yeah, all yeah, off. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, Star Wars Visions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I like yeah, I like when they're doing these like short animated things and they're just popping right away. Like I like yeah. how they're giving this all at once and they gave us Groot, uh, you know, all the Groot ones all at once as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much coming right off of Andor <laughs> in two weeks, once that's done. We'll have Tales of the Jedi, which follows Asuka. It's going to be six episodes, so Ahsoka's got three, and Count Dooku's got three. And there, some of these things have trailers or not. I'll let you know. So, like, Tales of the Jedi has a trailer. So, if you want to go watch the trailer on Twitter, on YouTube, you can go check it out right now. Bad Batch, they showed footage, but they didn't release the trailer online. And from right. what I saw of Tales of the Jedi, it looks it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. It's it's one of those for all ages types things, but. For us going into Ahsoka, the series presumably next year, and and wanting to know more about Dooku because if you don't know, Count Dooku is a very interesting, very interesting oh, character. It gives you some good stuff. Play. Yeah, he's, he's very and he's very powerful too. A lot, a lot of the movies you watch and stuff like that kind of ride Dooku off as like some failed person on both sides, but nah, man, like this, he's a very powerful Jedi. Uh, I want to say Gray um, because you can argue both ways. Him yeah. And gray um i think he's a very powerful gray sure um and and the big big ass news mandalorian season three i mean people are literally losing their shit for this like I, I, you know I, i'm playing destiny and people coming in like, just, mandalorian threes <laughs> oh, yeah, i know i understand watch the show later like i get it you know like uh and yeah and the official quote is you are no longer the mandalorian big old question marks big question marks what's going on what's happening um mandalorian is i think is 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 the catalyst it has been since yeah the catalyst to get things started uh back oh, yeah. up for star wars um so we're gonna see a lot of stuff start popping off with that so i highly suggest you just get started um and and like i said watch clone wars before ashoka drops um and then you know ander and all that stuff is coming through so it'll be great uh and, and from what i saw tales of the jedi as well that yeah, that definitely yeah. looks very uh clone yeah. wars and uh um yeah, it very it looks very Clone Wars esque. But They're doing it's, it's, justice to what we wanted in movies that they just never gave. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Like, you know, and and I, I I like this. You know, when, when you're young, when you're younger, you, you when you see food in front of you, you just want to eat, eat, like right. You just want to consume as much as you can because you think it's gonna go away. But when you get older, you start to consume in in very desirable portions, and I think that's kind of what's going on with. <clears throat> Star Wars is that they're giving us these very delightful portions that we can 
can eat and not only just eat and stuff our mouths and wait for the next one, we can digest it and think about it and then move on to the next one. Um, very, I think Disney is Disney. I, I just really am just blown away by Disney. People hate, like hate Disney. I think anybody hates big franchises, monopolies, or whatever, they just hate them because they just feel like you're not going to get much out of anything else. And I remember how many people, when they acquired Marvel and they acquired Star Wars, I mean, people were just upset. But Disney's, I feel like they're doing it the right way. They they are the umbrella, but they're just kind of letting them just thrive, man. And, yeah. and the money's just raining in, and Mouse is just sitting there with his feet up, like I'm gonna hold another convention because I want to. Like it's just, it's great. The Mouse um, is Emperor Palpatine meets uh, Mr. Yeah. Burns, just like actually do go do. They they actually did a a meme Disney themselves with him in a black uh in, in a Palpatine <laughs> yeah, and he was a Sith. I can't. I gotta remember. Oh that. man, so, it's so good. Um. Oh my god. They definitely. You know what? You know what I love coming out of. So for Star Wars specifically, coming out of. Star. What was the Star Wars convention called that they had a couple of months ago? Um, uh, Star Wars celebrations. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, celebrations. Everyone was pissed, including ourselves. We're like, it was Willow. It was Willow. Like, that's the only thing that we came out of it. We got no trailers for anything. Yeah, they did us, they did wow. fan service, and they gave us the Mandalorian trailer that was on the black web that now you can actually find now pretty much everywhere. Um, you got you got Tales of the Jedi. You got Bad Batch. They did give us uh, a couple of pictures, but no video of Skeleton Crew with not Orlando Bloom, not Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Dumbledore. What? Oh, my God. What is his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sherlock Holmes. Oh my God! Why can't I think of his name? I, I, I forget, but I know he's talking about. You just say yeah. Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was just Dumbledore. That's what. That's where I was get, yeah, getting it from. Yeah. I can't think of his name. Uh, the actor from it, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s um, um, Sher- uh, Holmes. Sherlock, yeah, no, yeah, Sherlock yeah. Holmes. Anyway, yeah. So, so they gave us that, and they did give us a new Willow trailer. I'm a big fan of Willow. The new Willow trailer's out. Dude. If you want to go check that out, l- oh, look dude. at it. it it's, it's the same it's, dude, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, it's him. Yeah, it's, he's awesome. he's still like that little curly hair guy running around. I was like, what the f- did he preserve him? Put him on ice? Like he's a real yeah, super right? okay. He looks exactly the same. Pretty awesome. And and then, I'm so happy that kids get to see what we Oh grew up yeah. Oh that, man. Wow. And Willow, bro. That was anyway. And it looks so good. And it looks so good too. It could <laughs> really be so good. bad, but it looks so good. And then once that was done, then uh the the king, Kevin. <laughs> Then the king yeah. came out, my man, and uh, they started with something very interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's been talked about. Yeah, in you memeing know, and jokes, though. I like that. It's Marvel, it. though. Our, our, like, I love it. I love this this thing, this culture that's been like deep rooted in the Marvel lately. Is like, if the fans want it, we'll deliver. Like, it, it's like, uh, what's her fuck? What's her, what's her name? Agatha. You know the Agatha song. Yes. We made it. We're making remixes. Like, all right, good we'll Agatha. Show. Agatha all like, along. You know, yep. Yep. Musical. Freaking. We want to. We don't. Where, where is it? We want to see it for Christmas. Well, all right. Well, here you go. Here's the Rogers musical. <laughs> I'm here for it. I hope they have the same cheeky cast that they had before, and I hope they're just flamboyant as they were in the in the oh, show. Yeah. Like, Get the same people. I'm, like, I don't I care. Just do it. it. Dude, I'll buy tickets if I can. If it's in New York, I might, I might just scoop some tickets and go. Like, yeah, 100%. that's the one thing I may have missed because unfortunately, this presentation wasn't live, and I was getting my news from two different Bro, people. It's coming. It's coming. Um, I don't know yeah. if it's a, I don't know if it's just gonna be a, a, a musical like Hamilton. How they, I mean, well, that was a musical on Broadway. I don't know if it's gonna be straight to Disney Plus or it's actually gonna be like a Broadway show. I don't know that. Oh. I, live, it, like, I think it would be it, awesome, yeah. Film it live and then throw it on Disney. I mean, why not both make that money? Exactly, why not? Why Wakanda not? Forever footage shown and uh, and Ironheart. I didn't watch any more Wakanda Forever footage. I don't want to see any. They, they this was, I, I got, yeah. I got everything, you know? I got just Ironheart snapping out the Ironheart. Okay, you know, I felt like that was a little... <laughs> But then again, I'm a guy that already knows. It, but I was just like, okay, we understand. Like, if you don't know, it's an iron heart for your ass. <laughs> like, it's just okay. Uh, but I get it. I get it. It's not going to be a you know. Well, bad news is Matt, our hopes got shot down. I mean, no Robert Downey Jr. on that. You know, it's we we now Shuri is her mentor instead of Robert Downey Jr. And I think it fits the MCU better than what it could have. 
uh, I just miss RDJ. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's still a lot of still. stuff. Yeah, there's still. still a lot of stuff that could happen. Let's just say there that. I'm, I'm, I will never say never at this point when it comes to he anything. Did, he... it's, it's, it's unlikely, but so, there's, there's things... There's things over the next couple of years that he could his voice face something he could pop in. I, I, I will say this is I want to say an 80 percent chance that he's definitely going to come back in something, but it may not be what we want um, because he's he yeah. stops saying no to you never know what happens. So to me, that's 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 him under contract without saying yes. And if anybody <laughs> knows how to bounce around the NDA is Robert Dunning Jr. Um, <clears throat> OK, where are we at? Lord. There's a lot. Anthony Ramos will be playing the hood misfit that takes in other misfits and sounds like an antihero. Or I guess yeah, another he's, Robin Hood story. Yeah, yeah. he's he's going to be in that runs off the, the brief footage that they shown of Ironheart. They just started production on it a couple of weeks, so it's been filming for a few weeks. So they brought him out there. If you don't know who Anthony Ramos is, he's an awesome actor. He was in uh, the ha he was in Hamilton. He was in uh, what was that other movie that just recently came out over the past year that was very musical-esque that was based in like new york city as well um that was actually pretty cool and he he's he's a he's a fantastic actor so he's playing uh he's playing the hood he's playing the hood in there and it's pretty cool because the hood is a is an interesting character and this just goes back to we got moon night now we're getting we'll just talk about it in a few minutes we're getting werewolf by night we're getting not these major a characters but they're bringing them in and with the right actors and the right story and we want to know more oh, and we're having no. fun with it <clears throat> yeah uh yeah sure you know like like yeah he's very he's you know he's it's just another another piece of diversity that gets you know plugged into the the whole scheme of things and i, and I love it uh, you know it's it's i just Man, it's like Marvel's just hitting everything, dude. It's like it, you, you, things that you just don't even think about, like coming out or who you would see. It, I'm just like, okay, sure. You know, like at this point, I'm just like, all right, that's great, though. The hood, let's go. Uh, Paul Rudd <laughs> describes Quantumania as bananas. You know, at the end of the day, it's Paul Rudd. So I don't get really excited when he says stuff like that because that's something he would say anyway. You know, it's just like a thing. But I like Paul Rudd a lot. Uh, and uh, Ant-Man footage ended with Kang asking Scott to team up. And Scott denies Kang and Kang pins him against the wall with telekinesis. So, I mean, no surprise here, but uh, cool. This <laughs> is, this is, I mean, we all... We all knew know who, or majority of us know who Kang is and his presence and how crazy he could get. Yeah. And I'm trying. We all knew Thanos too, just by name, and we knew that they were going to do the Infinity Stones and everything, right? But we really started Thanos getting a okay. taste of him. When did we start getting the taste of him in the MCU, though? Like we know, uh, like Thor, this is uh, Thor one, actually. Thor Knowing one. Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, we two. did, but that was a little bit Thor later one. when we got. Remember ugly, remember ugly, great face Thanos. Yeah, that was the end credit scene. It was the end credit yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. But in Guardians of the Galaxy, though, we also got the the he was in the movie with because he told what's his face, uh, the purple guy with the hammer, like you defy yeah, yeah, yeah. me, I'm gonna smash you. And he was like, oh, right, right, shit, right. okay, um, like this is gonna be that movie, and it's going to be even more over the top because Bigger. he's yeah. the, he's the main. He's the main, yeah, I mean, and he's already been established as oh my god, this dude can literally make realities. Okay, what? And yeah. then like. And you're like, and, they, and that was the that was the good king, <laughs> the king that was just like, I don't want to do this anymore, king. And he's like, if you kill me, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing else we can do. And and you know, it, and here we go, here we yeah, go. He, um, he this who king remains around, yeah, yeah, he who remains propped himself up as the good corny guy who was trying to save everybody and everything that was said at Comic Con, and now today with with the footage that was shown this kang is the kind that we're gonna see is nuts like yeah, the, the the bad kang and i'm all for it i, I like think, i like i like i oh mean i like majors majors is an insanely good yeah, actor yeah. i just really hope that they, they the go ham with it because thanos i don't feel like i mean thanos was big and thanos was really scary 
but we didn't really get the harp on Thanos. Kang, you marinate on the idea that this man creates realities and can destroy them. How in the hell are the Avengers going to do anything? Like, it, it, like the OG right? Avengers have the most experience is gone. <laughs> what? We got kids and people that are just getting into powers. Like, you, you get to marinate on that until 2023. 2024. Shit, right? Yeah, you get to marinate on it for all the end of this year, the rest of next year, because it has to develop everything first. Yep, 2024. 2024, you get to, you know, your new Avengers. And, um, but the characters that they're actually pushing, I mean, I saw Sparks of Nova at some point. So we're getting these really hard hitters. People are bringing back um, Captain Marvel back into the light. The Kree are coming back in, like all these little things going on. We have all these little sub fights that's going to be happening all around. And then you have street level stuff going on so now we're getting all these massive plots together which i love because we get to break away from the avenger train over and over and over again which can't get old you know it's just like oh how will the avengers you know pick up so anyway and, and, and the one thing i like about this and uh, i have my i have my one complaint about thor love and thunder but i'll wait until you watch it mm. we have the big bad now thanos was 99.9999% CGI, right? Actually, yeah. no, it was 100% CGI. What am I saying? Yeah, well, um, I mean, you can say 99 just because but, of mocap. But, but Kang, it's he's yeah. not a big, giant alien. It's Have you seen him lately, though? No, he's, bro, dude, what's his well, face? Shang-Chi. Yeah, Shang like, what what's his, what's, uh, Simu Lee reposted the tweet. He's like, oh, the yeah, Avengers are slow. Like, I was bro. like, oh. How are we gonna fight this man? <laughs> I love Stephen Lee. He's he's, he's, he's so awesome. Weird. Um, but yeah, like seeing him in uh Loki, and then seeing him, th- I was like, bro, it's like night and day, yeah. bro. I, I was just like, oh, he's not even done. You know, that's the beginning of his transformation, not the end. Oh yeah, this just started. Yeah, this is at the end. I was like, ah, I ordered my workout machine. <laughs> yeah, know, like, this dude, he looked like. And then the look he had on his face, bro. He you looks know, like he was, he was about like, to punch so like, somebody. Yeah, testosterone pumping. This man just became a manly man, man. You know, this is going to be wild. It's going to be, I, I'm telling you, he's, I think he's like six something anyway. Uh, so he's going to, he's a tall dude. Like, he's, he's not, he, he's, a, he's a big guy. Yeah. yeah but I'm, I, I'm what, really what I was crazy. saying with that though is, is it's going to be cool to see like human versus human because he's not an alien yeah. Yeah, even yeah, though he's yeah, big yeah, yeah. and there are going to be cgi things with him but it's human face but human body it's not seven like feet tall Christ. or 100 yeah, feet tall yeah. i i, I like that <laughs> well maybe <laughs> yeah they, i mean yeah you never know okay. but it's, uh, yeah Ooh, he's yeah it's gonna be fun that was hey. gonna be fun for sure werewolf by night trailer black and white shots of the man thing trailer it was very campy and grindhouse campy I, i'm not that i throw it up in the air it's like all right cool whatever you know maybe maybe not uh it's not something i'm super excited about secret invasion that's a different story um <sighs> ooh, uh we finally get to see uh samuel J- it was samuel jackson yeah right um How the f- he had he had a he had an eye yeah uh, huh? you know, yeah. Man? Yeah. Watch the trailer, that's all i'm gonna say samuel looking good i think samuel been hitting the gym too uh, so I, you know, seeing all these old fellas like get back in shape and like these guys that are 40 plus make me feel real good soon. <laughs> you know, like uh, I was just uh, not to be off topic. I was just watching Terrell Owens run a 4 4, bro. Uh, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> what? Years old and looking like a damn chopped up day. I, man, I, it's hope for me still. Like I could go back to my high school, I mean, my uh, college days. Man, I'm so excited. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, Secret Invasion looks dope uh i i want me a good old like agent you know we haven't really gotten that and we could say black widow but that wasn't really agenty for me that was like superhero stuff i want that old agent like hit the clues together you know f someone up mind screwing them left and right because we don't know what happened to nick fury because that wasn't nick fury in in spider-man so yeah now yep we now we get to find out what's going on man got new eyeballs and stuff like where were you you know was he with captain america like i mean a cat with captain america was he with uh, Captain Marvel? Like, well, what's going on? So there's a lot to, is he the one that organized the big meeting? Does he, he knows stuff that not even S.H.I.E.L.D. knows because he's been trusted. And it's really, you know, we, we talk shit about the, the Captain Marvel movie, but the Kree, or you know, people he's helping in general, they gave him secrets 
long time ago that he's been using to this day. Yeah. So that relationship's always been there because he had people on speed dial. Um, and th- whoever saw She Hulk, that weird freaking interaction. Hello? Question marks. Oh, you yeah. Know? Just saying that weird interaction with the fucking spaceship coming out of nowhere and making them crash. So random. <laughs> you know, it just, just flew out. I mean, there's a lot to be had there. So a lot of unfolding uh coming, coming, coming our way. Uh and that was there was a couple of trailers, obviously, Werewolf by Night, we just talked about, and we just talked about uh Secret Evasion. The Secret Evasion trailer is really good. It's like a um, it reminds me of Falcon and Winter Soldier, how it was very much like an action. Yeah. But like we have to go undercover because of all these things. Like it's very Jason Bourne. Mm. I know we talked about this with Andor when you watch it, just because we know oh, where man. it ends off with Andor. Rogue One. Oh. Right? Yeah, what? man. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. But like that trailer, it, like if you watch Secret Vision, it doesn't feel like Marvel. Like mo- it, it, it feels like a, a spy. Like She Hulk felt like a sitcom lawyer yeah. show. Yeah. This feels like a spy action drama that's going to yeah. unfold and i like it i'm all I love for it, it. and yeah. some of the scenes that they showed with uh oh my god what's that actor's name who was the main leader of the kree in captain marvel movie i love him as an actor he was also in oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh wait wasn't he in rogue one was he in what no what was he in the actor secret uh, invasion the white the white guy the main white guy who got force choked by uh by Darth Vader? Don't let your ego, whatever. Uh Ben Ben Mendelssohn. Talos, he played. Yeah, Ben Mendelssohn. He was also the bad guy in Ready Player One. What Star Wars movie was he in? Yeah, he was in Road One. He was the main bad yeah, guy yeah, in Road yeah, One. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Know. Yeah. He comes back, and there's a scene at the end of it where it's like, oh, this is where we're going with it. That trailer's amazing. I can't yeah. wait for it. I it's it back. To, yeah, it's it's awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> it's tough. It's Sorry. tough. Um, no, no problem. It's it's great. Like we we need it, and I think it's a great space. Um, you know, past all the superhero stuff to get, you know, that a really dark espionage type feel. Yeah, uh, that's exactly yeah. what it feels like. Yep. So uh, I guess this is kind of some news and drama. So every presenter at D23 have been reading off of a teleprompter. Yep. When Kevin Feige walked on the stage, they turned it off and he's been presenting for, for over an hour. Well, he presented for well over, I think it went into two hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was Kevin Feige. You know, when you when you, when you enjoy your job and you do it effing well, you don't need, you don't need nothing. Like, I think people are so content with seeing him. I mean, they're probably more happy seeing him than they, than, than they are seeing the president at this point. It's just like, you know, it's just like Kevin Feige. You know you're <laughs> going to get something. Like, every time he comes on stage, he, he slaps you in the face and then stares at you. It, it, it's like, <laughs> I got news. We, 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 there's so much he can give us. Like, every time we, we're like, I wonder what we're going to get there. We're going to get Wolverine. We're going to get Squirrel Girl. We're going to get, like, we literally just, and then he he's just like, Blah! and you're just like, I didn't think of that, but I want it. You know, <laughs> so it's just, I don't know, Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just to think of it, like I've I've done a lot of public speaking. You yourself, obviously, and we're streamers, right? But like, when you have to go on stage and talk about, for I think when I think it was about two hours, close to two hours, or even a little over two hours, he was on stage for no one to two. two, It was like an hour and a half. Excuse me, it was an hour and a half. Going over everything we just talked about and a couple of more things, and not having a teleprompter for it, like that's. This is a man who does his job too f-ing well in a good way for us. Yeah. And I'm in for it. He's and you know he's I'm in for it. And I mean, you know you kicking ass when you legit legit are making 10 year plans at a time. <laughs> and we know it's more than 10 years too. It's just I mean, how old is he? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Oh man, it's so good. It's so good. Um, but yeah. Um, and then going into Cap uh, Captain America 4. New World Order. Um, and we're gonna have a new Falcon. So that's gonna be dope. That's gonna be dope. Um, uh, I'm not yeah. gonna get too much in. We only got a few more minutes to go. So go ahead. What you gonna say? Yeah, no, but with with Fantastic Four, you know, we already know we knew John Watts was gonna be it, oh, but yeah. he had to back out because he had other plans. But we now have the new director, which I think we talked about last time, but it was officially yeah, official today with Matt uh Shackman, which recently he actually directed all nine episodes of WandaVision. So Thumbs when up. you talk about a story 
telling, you talk about action, you talk about drama, you talk about CGI. I mean, talk about four people that that fit it. And you directed four people, the two kids, Vision and and Wanda. You got it. You got it. It fits. It fits. Like it. I'm that actually is, I'm I'm for it. Awesome. Yeah, and so and I don't know if they did it before, but I'm just seeing this now in Marvel. They say that it'll officially be in theaters November 8, 2024. So we have to wait two years. I don't remember if we knew that or not. I honestly don't remember. Facing out of Comic-Con. Like, I feel like we they did. did. Yeah, they didn't. Put, I don't think they put a date on Fantastic Four. I think it was just 2024 for Fantastic Four. Or something like that. Yeah, maybe it was like fall 2024 maybe, but they have yeah. a date now. So, But who knows? I think things can shift. I, I, I'm good with waiting. They're giving me too much stuff to begin with. Like, I... Fantastic Four is gonna be a an, that's another like huge franchise to go off of because I mean it's not the Avengers, it's Fantastic Four. They have their own shit to deal with, you know? Yep. Um, and it all, of course it's gonna loop all in, in the in the end game, but whatever. Um yeah, so Thunderbolts. This one got me. This one, yeah. this this one got me. I'm I, I'm intrigued. I'm very much intrigued by it. I'm intrigued by it too, because of certain people that's there. Um, yes. because I thought for sure that Yelena and, and, uh, uh, Katie, um, were going to be a thing, but okay. Um, but who knows when this take place, but who knows when this takes place, right? So, so, Red Guardians the, um, yeah, so with the Thunderbolts, uh, that was kind of like the last thing they left off with, um, for the show and they, they showed the, um, you can look for it too. There's a piece of concept art for the the, the key shot of the Thunderbolts, yeah. and it's a uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus, aka Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. I just love saying that name. Uh, she's back. She's all the way to the left. Next to her is Ghost. It took me a second, but Ghost was uh, Ant Man and Wasp's bad girl, the one that was yeah. like stuck in the quantum. She was yeah. also in a lot of other good movies. She's a really good actress. Who the, the actress that plays her, but it's Ghost. Uh, Yelena Belova, your 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 ex 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 girlfriend comes back. Uh, Flo, Flo, Flo is my girl. Red Guardian, Bucky, aka Winter Soldier, Taskmaster, That's Taskmaster, and like, U.S. Agent. This is a very interesting group. Like, there's some of them. U.S. Agent makes sense. Um, 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 Yelena, I'm kind of like I don't understand it. Based off what we just saw, so maybe it's before. I I don't know. Before Hawkeye, they made you back. I I like Red Guardian. I, give me more Red Guardian. I loved him. I loved him. Mm. And hearing that him and Bucky no. are going to be in the same. But like, where does Bucky come in on this? Like, how does Bucky? Like, how is Bucky part of the Thunderbolts? I don't. I don't get that. I don't get that. So. Uh, it's intriguing. Uh, it's intriguing to see the least. Agent. Maybe he was. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we're gonna find some stuff out in Captain America. I think that's probably when everything is gonna start making more sense because he's obviously gonna be in Captain America. So, um, I mean, it's named New World Order for a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thunderbolts is probably gonna be a thing because uh, Avengers are not around. Maybe they're just taking things in their own hand, and it's like we're taking justice in our own hand the way we want to do it versus like having to answer the government. Blah blah blah. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that's the thing. You know, we'll see. Kevin Feige also jokes that Winter Soldier is the most mentally stable person on the team. I don't agree with that. I think Yelena is okay. All right. I think Bucky's still trying to stop killing people by words <laughs> triggering my, whatever. Um, just, but think anyway. of the just think of the conversations between him and Red Guardian. Like, he has to listen to all of the Captain America like, stories from Red Guardian. I've been around longer than you. Like, I, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, they're going to have to. Yeah, because they, yeah, they're it's same gonna time. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Wow. Anyway, that's it, everyone. That's the show. There's a lot to cram in. Sorry we had to go really fast. We had to, you know, uh, typically just want to remind you that the shows are going to be on uh, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern um, every other Saturday. So not next Saturday, but the Saturday after. Unless there's like an event or something coming up where I won't be here, which will probably be in October, depending on how it lines up. I don't know. Yeah, there's, a lot, of, there's a lot of things going on, right? In October, yeah. you got New York Comic-Con, Comic -Con, you got TwitchCon, you got a bunch of things coming up. Yep, yep, yep. So keep your eye out. Again, anything that you guys, I know it's kind of fast and we just kind of cram, cram, cram. Um, but there's a lot of information. There's still going to be a lot more information to go over. Uh, we still got to talk about like House of Dragons. We still got to talk about uh, She-Hulk. We still got to talk about Lords of uh, Lord of the Rings, Ring of Power, which I'm enjoying. And people have their, their if, ands, and buts. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying both. 
And people are bitching and complaining about both. But you know, that's the world we live in in entertainment. People are going to bitch. Um, I'm glad that they made the change to slow down the, the reviews so people can't review bomb stuff because they're dumb. Uh, and it's literally dumb. But other than that, <clears throat> yeah, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Uh, my name is Technique. I am your host for today. You can find me anywhere uh, entertainment-wise by going to Twitch. And that's Technique. No, you know, Ian, just a Q. Uh, and on Twitter, is Technique TV. Matt? <clears throat> Yeah, my name's Matt, aka Nighthawk Plays. Plays spelt with a Z. Uh, Monday through Friday, you can find me on Twitch. You can find me on YouTube as something a little different, Polka Hawk, where I stream and and upload a bunch of uh, Pokemon videos. Pretty much me opening up Pokemon cards and having an absolute blast. But yeah, tw- Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, but mainly Twitch. Uh, it's Nighthawk Plays. Plays spelt with a Z. Uh, playing a bunch of video games this week and very much looking forward to next month with Gotham Knights and and November with 9 million games coming out because this has been a drought of the past few months with video games. I mean, next month, we got we got Gotham, which I think we're going to have Eddie Monster on the show uh, for, for that. Dude, so, wait a second. Yeah. It was so funny. Last week, I was playing Rumbleverse, and, mm-hmm. and it was end circle with me and uh, a community member of mine, uh, Pat, and, and we, we had nothing. And we we were just trying to stay away from this one group, and it ended up I got pile driven to hell. And I'm like Ed, Mo-. I'm like no, it can't be Ed Monster. <laughs> and I go on just stream, and I see he won. I'm like oh that's 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 pretty dope. He absolutely yeah. just shat on me in my in Rumble verse. It was that's really funny. It was really funny. Yeah, we'll be we'll be bringing him on the show for definitely for Gotham Knights. Uh, he's already confirmed. He says he's excited. So we'll I'm have getting him more on- excited for it. I'm getting more excited for it after the past couple of trailers we saw. I'm still, I'm still I'm, like, I'm excited about the news. I'm not excited about the way it looks. I really hope they yes. they spice that game. That yes, game looks that's horrible. It, yeah, my opinion it looks really bad. Graphics look shitty. Yes, the textures yeah. look bad. And why is Red Hood punching people with pistols? Anyway, we'll talk more about that next time. So hope to see you guys on the mix. Uh, take it easy. Do your homework. Uh, watch those shows, and we'll talk more about it next week. And hopefully, have more stuff from Disney. Uh, and let us know in the comics on youtube or whatever platform you're listening to us on tell us what you like to see we're taking notes so thank you so much for all your support as always have a good day have a good saturday and good weekend and we'll see you next time on the mix take it easy this has been episode 51